exoplanets, CGI or real? Well, that's an interesting question. It is. We don't mean to ruffle feathers too much, but I do want people to put their thinking cap on and let's take an honest look at the things that we have been presented. And this kind of reminds me of this, is it live or Memorex? And I think live or Memorex is a little bit more real because it was the person's voice on this. These aren't really what we're thinking. They're not photographs. They're not something that was taken of these exoplanets because as you teach and explain that they're way too far away. They, they don't even know what they are, where they are. They can't see that far. So they have to take some artistic license. And it's all CGI. And what does CGI stand for? Computer Graphics Imaging. So that means they made it up on a computer, sort of like Toy Story. Well, essentially. They say they took some data, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Well, here is a photograph that we took of the toadstools in Utah. You applied a different color to it to make it look a little unworldly, and it didn't take much. No. And we're going to show that with a basically a zero budget and PowerPoint tools and some Photoshop tools, but mainly plain PowerPoint tools and no budget, we can create things that look very similar to what they are putting forth and saying is real, although what they're putting forth is CGI, and we're admitting that we're applying a few techniques to these true photographs that we have taken. The interesting thing about all that is, whether it's NASA or whether it's magazines or whether it's some movie somewhere, whatever, they even admit oftentimes that it is composite, it is images, it's uh, taken from data. They use the same terminology. It's just they show it as though a picture was taken, and a lot of times that's what people believe. And they're really cool pictures. Oh, they so are. our brain translates it into reality and apply it to whatever they're saying it is. And all of a sudden that becomes the image that we have etched in our mind because they've put the CGI graphics there. Well, that's exactly right. Just like this Discover magazine, they have a very realistic looking image there. Well, that kind of looks like... Uh, the mono lake. Mono lake, yeah, it does. With the, the two foot pinnacles. But look what it says. How do we draw alien planets? With every big exoplanet discovery comes a stunning artist rendition of a new world. Are these images realistic? Well, they can't be because they can't see them. They are just interpreting what they want it to look like that we think is cool. A lot of these photographs and pictures are very similar to the western desert landscape found in California and Utah and Arizona. And we will be showing that as we can show a photograph that is very similar to what they have presented. Not and to mention Greenland. This looks like the Sierra Nevadas near Lone Pine. It does. And they've just put, what is that, Jupiter up there? No, some kind of exoplanet. Oh, okay. Well, it kind of reminds me of Jupiter. Maybe it's Jupiter's stepbrother. What they have, and then here's a photograph that we took just in Lone Pine, California. And then look at this picture. It looks very unworldly with these... Kind of looks fake, huh? Space alien plants. Yeah, the whole thing does look <laughs> fake. But we can show you a photograph of what you could start with. It's just very similar to Alabama Hills in California, which is and has been a major location for movie and films for decades. So why wouldn't NASA use it, right? I believe even Lost in Space was filmed there. I used PowerPoint and popped in this beautiful hot air balloon from Albuquerque. And that doesn't look much different than what they've done, does it? No. I just wish I had their budget. I have a zero budget. Back to Discover. Astronomical websites and press releases brim with pictures of swirling gas giants, watery terrestrial worlds, and strange planetary systems with exotic suns. But just how realistic are these artist concepts? Do they truly show newly discovered worlds, or are they simply fanciful pictures meant to draw you into reading about the latest addition to the exoplanet menagerie? I think they are, because you wouldn't read it if it didn't have this captivating photograph. Correct. CGI, I should Correct. say. These aren't just people slapping up a new exoplanet template every time that one is discovered. This is a real depiction, if we can have one. What? No, they can't. <laughs> Glad they added that, if we can have one. Who has been illustrating other worlds since 1995, which indicates they've been doing this for 
30 years. Interesting, right? Is this the Earth? Depictions of the Earth? It sort of looks like a child's mobile, doesn't it? <laughs> Some more of our pictures, huh? Yeah, you could see where they could take this picture and oh, make yeah. up all kinds of things with it. In a it big just way. depends on how much and where you want to zoom in on what you could do. It's based on scientific fact as far as the facts go that we have. And we you know that their facts change. Well, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. And then beyond that, it's fact-based theory. <sighs> Is that not, that doesn't even make sense. Fact and theory don't even fit together. No. You're trying to see if a theory will become a fact. As in the case of evolution, it still remains a theory, and some contend that it is still a hypothesis. This artist's concept of the tidally locked gas giant, WASP-39B, was developed in part from a transmission spectrum taken by the James Webb Space Telescope as the planet transited its star. The data shows evidence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Other telescopes have found water vapor, sodium, and potassium. Astronomers believe the planet has clouds, but no Jupiter-like bands. Let me say something about this. You can take an average room or a mall or a building or anything, and in that room, you can turn on an AM radio and get AM sounds. You can turn on FM radio and get FM sounds. You can turn on a wireless and get Wi-Fi. You can turn on a TV and get TV. You can, all kinds of machines. Any given mall has multiple people in it. Every one of them just about have a cell phone either in their pocket or in their purse. And that cell phone can ring. Somebody from way overseas could call. And it will ring. And there could be a security detail that have two-way radios. There could be a ham radio portable in there. There are all kinds of police scanners, fire department scan. You name it, there could be multiple, multiple frequencies going on in any given room at any given time. And the thing is, we could assign colors to certain bandwidths of frequencies, and we can come up with our own nebula or our own galaxy or our own planet or based on what's in that room. But it has nothing to do with reality. It doesn't reflect what we see, but we could put it on paper and make it look like we could see it. It has nothing to do with the reality of what it looks like in that room. So if we want to make a composite image or a image made out of data, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Beyond the towering clouds of a Saturnian evening. Oh, that sounds nice. Passing moons trundle back and forth. The spectacular rings seem to bend as the light passes through denser air toward the horizon. It sounds like H.G. Wells or Jules Verne. <laughs> it's just poetic wording. And poetic license. Yeah. Artistic license. Mm -hmm. All of what they're doing. Even when artistic license is involved, it is still within the boundaries of what's plausible. Hmm. Anything's Anything. plausible in their world, but is any of it reality? Is any of it plausible? Is any of it possible? Mainly in an evolutionary worldview it is, but not in a biblical creation worldview. You can do a diagram. You can do a painting that shows everything just great and is totally uninspired. Or you can try to bring a little bit of beauty into the world. And that's what they're doing. They're just adding some beauty and captivating and capturing people's attention so that they'll take in the information that's attached to this CGI. That's exactly right. And there was a guy, or is a guy, named Robert Simmons, who is with NASA. There's this article written about him, uh, Conversations with Goddard. We he, went to Goddard. We did. A few weeks back. He has been involved in several divisions of NASA. Anybody that had an iPhone first edition had the blue marble, they call it, the Earth on that uh, splash screen or whatever you call it there. He's the guy that actually made that picture, actually made that thing up. He even says in an interview, it is photoshopped. It's, it has to be. And he comes out and talks about how all this data is what he uses to formulate whatever he wants. But what's interesting about the article is he actually said that he did these things to match people's expectation of how Earth looks from space. That ball became the famous blue marble. He admits it. It's the same thing with all of our planets. All Everything that's out there, as far as what we see, is not necessarily what they actually get. 
It is somebody's interpretation of it. Well, this cool-looking, surreal CGI that they've put together looks a lot like scenes that we see from Moki Dugway in Utah. And if you've never been to Moki Dugway and you don't know what Moki Dugway is, check it out. It's an awesome, awesome thing. But you can see that they just can take these ideas, put it through Photoshop, and change things around and make it the surreal artist interpretation of what they think we want to see. In the decades since the first discovery of an extrasolar planet in 1992, the field has veritably exploded with more than 5,000 confirmed planets known today. I don't think so. And then, of course, two things. They talk about confirmed. They're saying it as a fact. And they say they use the word known, which is they're not known as a fact at all. We may have to do a video on the various ways that they identify these things at these distances. But even Pluto, they don't even know if it's a planet. It was discovered, and they called it a planet. It was the ninth planet in our solar system. And then in 2006, they said it's not a planet. Magazines all over the place and newspapers were publishing in 2007 that Pluto is not a planet. And Pluto, by the way, is in our solar system, and they don't even know if it's a planet. Look at some of these. February 24. Did Pluto ever actually stop being a planet? Experts debate. April 2024. Pluto is a planet again, at least in Arizona. May 2024. Is Pluto a planet? It depends. In June of 2024, Pluto isn't a planet, but it gives us clues. What is this? February, April, May, June. Back and forth. Back and forth. They don't even know if Pluto is a planet in its inner solar system. But they have all these known exoplanets. There are tens of, if not hundreds, of light years away. Really? I don't think so. Hmm. Still, many images found in news stories or press releases look similar. And it's not despite the deluge of scientific data. It's because of it. Although astronomers are still hashing out the details, we do know that the overall process of building planets is remarkably uniform throughout the galaxy. All planets seem to form from the disk of debris left over after their parent star has ignited, though even tiny variances can render vastly different planets and systems over time. Although each illustration comes from the imagination of an artist, Exactly. Hmm. It is in an informed, careful depiction of what could be reality that is designed to both educate and inspire. What could be reality? <laughs> well, you know, Michelangelo painted a lot of people <laughs> and he never saw them, but it was his imagination of what they looked like. And I would kind of want to interject that they probably didn't look anything like what he wanted them. It's what his imagination was. And that is another example of how those are what we now imagine when people's names are presented to us. It's the same with these exoplanets. They put forth a, a pretty picture, and that's what connects with the terminology. Absolutely, but they say the building of planets is uniform throughout the galaxy, and all planets seem to form from a disk of debris. Uh, no, these planets were formed because God said. Well, at least these celestial bodies. These celestial bodies were formed when God said, he's the one that put everything out there and he knows exactly what's there. They're not forming now. No, no. He says it's, it is done. Back to this last statement. So although each illustration comes from the imagination of an artist, it is an informed, careful depiction of what could be reality that is designed to both educate and inspire. Yes, it could be reality. It's not reality. It really can't be reality, but it is designed to educate. educate and that's the big Problem. We're educating people as a fact when really it is just somebody's imagination. It's just creation versus evolution. Absolutely. You have to understand and realize the difference. The Bible says in Psalm 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Boy, that's so true, isn't it? Leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe.